Hey guys, and welcome to another video. What I wanted to teach you today is is how to decimate, okay? As a decimated modifier for Blender. Let's like put you in a situation, right? Okay. Let's put you in a situation. You have an extremely high mesh. A lot of times when you're modeling and stuff like that, you actually can go into very a very high poly amount, which I can show you here. When you add a subdivision modifier, okay? Well, well, this thing can be very powerful, but it can hurt you in a lot of cases. Let's just say that we went very, uh, like, hardcore on the subdividing. And that's like six, you know? Six subdividing. Look at that. Look at all of those vertices, okay? What I'm going to teach you today is practically what you need to do is how do I get rid of all these vertices? Because right now it's making the computer extremely slow. If we actually go up here real quick, I can show you uh, to the viewport overlays, which it looks kind of like this, like ball inside of another ball, but the other one is kind of filled. You click on it, you go down and under text info, there's statistics. And this will pretty much show the statistic statistics of your environment of your creations that you're doing how many objects are there how many vertices affecting how many edges how many faces how many triangles stuff like that and if you look out right here this one object now because i subdivided it has 24,000 vertices we do not need these many vertices in this one object right and an easy way to really fix that is this decimate modifier right here. Each one of these things do a little bit different. We have collapse, unsubdivide, and parallel. Now, I wouldn't really do the third one because I think it's, it, it, I don't know, maybe it's more for it organic, not, not on organic things, but if you notice, it does look make, makes the muscle model look very messy and broken. I wouldn't do it, but unsubdivide and collapse are both very good options. I'll teach you about them real quick. Collapse, there's a limit you have, of course, zero to one. We have zero, which is the lowest you can go, to one, to the highest you can go, to the, to the normal object that you have, right? And when you put it to like, let's say half, it still keeps the figure of that, like the, the, the object. If you actually look in here, see how like it's moving the vertices to make sure that it's less decimated. I mean, make, making sure that it's, it doesn't have that many vertices. I'll show you even up here, it affects it. See up here. Now, yeah, so pay attention to the vertices of in your statistics of your object because you can easily you know break it and then boom you only get like two vertices that's not good i would suggest also putting to put mirror mode on pretty much this right here this mirrors the effect of the decimator on both axis on y on x y and z um ooh. and then if you want it to be triangulated you can be triangulated but i'm not gonna do that for now and this value right here the ratio i should probably explain this first but this is the 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 lower you have the more the less vertices you're going to have in your object and the higher you have the more it's going to be the normal object that you had before and uh, that's practically it for this uh, collapse you just always kind of i always keep the symmetry unless if you can see that the model is being broken up and you don't like how it's affecting the model and then you just turn it off you do not need to do that yeah, it's very nice then you have unsubdividing which this is very helpful you can just turn up this little thing mark here and it still keeps the shape like the shape of the faces if you notice right here when we collapsed everything we have a lot of squares we have a lot of triangles we have a lot of random vertices that don't look really right the unsubdividing will keep that vertices into more of like a square or triangle, whatever you you want, you know, into that. 
I've learned that using rounded numbers are the best option. I wouldn't suggest using like five. If you notice five kind of messes it up. Three kind of looks weird, but if I go to four, it's fixed. I don't really exactly know why that's like that, but Blender, you know, sometimes it wants to be special. But I say this is probably one of the best options, especially if you have already subdivided your object. And see, now we're getting to more of a lower poly object right here. And then we can press Shade Smooth, which makes it look beautiful. And, and you can even tell. Look at that. Well, if we maybe go back by a moment. There we go. Now you can't even tell. Wonderful. And now the, the amount of vertices that we use in this object now, which is 300, and the amount of, amount of vertices that we used before, which was, you know, 24,000, was it, it, the difference is insane. It will definitely optimize your computer and better, better it for the future, you know? This is a great thing to use if you don't want to re to apologize, right? And I think this is a great, great thing to use there. Now, it does work for other models, like more complex models like this one. We have a dragon model, which I, you've seen in when, you, when I first showed up because I forgot to hide it. Uh, but if you notice here, there's so many vertices. There's a lot of vertices. There you go. And of course, if you collapsed it, it kind of fixes it, makes it look kind of good, but you kind of get these jagged edges. Unsubdividing, this is where you kind of get into there. Look at that. Now you can't even tell. Look at that. So you can't even tell that it affected it. But it did. If you notice here, we made this to zero. We got a bunch of vertices there. I mean, we go over here to like five or, or six. It brings down the vertices a good amount. Now, of course, you got to probably put this up by a decent amount. It'll tell you the face count. Uh, sometimes these high poly, uh, more high poly models are a little bit messy, but unsubdividing will keep the more the look or the figure of your object that you kind of want. This also works for movable objects, so we can still, oh, we can still, if we, oh, there you go. So if we move the object, it still works. The decimator will still work on this. And once we add a decimator real quick, move it down to 0 0.5. Just even numbers are usually the best, which I guess they were point five isn't even. There we go. And there we go. And see, it still works. It still moves the character and the geometry in the way that you want it to. Um, and it will still keep the figure. I would say that the benefits of this workflow of decimating it is not only that you know, you don't have to read apologize and it keeps the figure still very much intact, but it's just quick and easy. You know, it's one of the fastest ways you can get your character that, you know, might have millions upon millions of vertices to, you know, a couple thousand or a couple hundred um, was still looking a decently well. But anyways, I hope you've enjoyed the video. This is pretty much it. Of course, you go a bit down here to modifiers, which I'll show you real quick where it, where it is, just in case if there's some really big newbies. <laughs> uh, modifiers are here in that little property. There we go. And I want you to check, I want to show you the statistic area in the overlays right here next to X-ray and where you go into different viewport shading, like wireframe, viewport shading and material pre uh, preview is solid and render view and so right next to it you click on overlays and it brings down this little bar viewport viewport overlays and go into statistics easy as that i i just want you to make pay attention to that so it's, it's just helpful but yeah i hope you guys have a good day night and morning and if you have any questions 
please do write down in the comments. I would love to hear about your thought opi thoughts, opinions, and ideas. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.